Today, I chat with pop punk band Make Out. Check it. The band Makeout has had an incredible story since day one. Previously consistent in half the band Trophy Wives, Makeout got a huge break when they won the Ernie Ball Battle of the Bands, solidifying a spot on the Vans Warp Tour, and judged by none other than legendary producer John Feldman. Taking a liking to the guys, Feldy signed Makeout to a studio deal, producing their first record, The Good Life, which featured the likes of Travis Barker of Blink-182 and Ashton and Callum of Five Seconds of Summer. The guys soon after signed to Rise Records, debuted their first single, put out their record, and went on their first big tour with none other than Blink-182. They've had a hell of a couple years, and have continued to have success since then. The guys toured the 2018 Vans Warped Tour, which was the last cross-country expedition for the traveling circus. Dishing out a shit ton of singles off of their album The Good Life, and I recently caught up with the guys on their fall tour in Pittsburgh with Cute Is What We Aim For, where we talked about Blink-182, the future, and more. Let's check it. I hate how much you love that. What's up guys, it's the Pop Punk Dad here with the guys from Makeout. What up? What's up? The last time I talked to you guys was at the Vans Warped Tour. And the audio got cut and the video, the interview never got made. And it sounded something like this. But now we're here and uh, this sounds a little better. So, uh, what have you guys been up to? Well, we've been on tour with Cute Is What We Aim For for, for like a few weeks now. Yeah. Um... We've been up to a bunch of stuff. We were tour prepping for this. We shot a couple of new music videos for some new songs. We're starting to gear up for uh, some new things. So you guys recently dropped a video for Blast Off, which was like a tour montage video at yeah. Warp Tour. Uh, what was your fondest memory of being on Warp Tour? <laughs> Just hanging out with people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think getting the whole experience, getting to see like literally. I mean. You have the opportunity because you're there every day to see every band, basically. As opposed to when, even like a few years ago, we got the opportunity, me and Tyler and our old band, to do like a couple dates. We didn't get to see anybody, basically. Yeah. In and out. Yeah, but like this was cool because we just got to like, I mean, you could go backstage for anybody pretty much and like you could just see what they do before they get on stage. It was just like a cool vibe. You know what I mean? I wasn't even playing. That was my first year doing it and I was really giddy the whole time. I'm like, there's <laughs> maybe a parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. And they're talking to four years strong. I love them both. <laughs> it's just like me the whole time. This is like two puppies hanging out. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Watch. wow. Yeah. <laughs> they like the same stuff. They're eating the same food. <laughs> Watched Don Broco about 30 or 40 times. Oh, every <laughs> Got in their circle pit a few times. Yeah. You guys, speaking of tours, me and Giddy, you guys did a tour with Blink-182. How was that, and was it everything you guys ever hoped for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's it's a new yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was wild, because honestly, those were our first shows with Makeout, actually. Really? Yeah. Um, and so to play in front of anywhere between seven and 10,000 people every night was pretty wild. <laughs> are, uh, are the Blink Eyes just as, like, rambunctious as they yeah. are on the DVDs and stuff? Uh, <laughs> they're all dads now, so everyone's like, we barely saw Matt. He would just hang out. Yeah. Mark would cruise around and, like, like after the show, he'd be walking around with his cup of red wine. Travis would just, like, work out, spend time with his kids. Yeah. yeah. That's just, really like, rad they bring their kids on tour. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they, they each had their own bus. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So they were, you know, they were in their own quarters, got to do pretty much whatever they wanted to do as long as they weren't on stage. But what you see on stage is very much them yeah, it's just, off of stage yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, like Mark is super goofy, just like he is on stage, and like just cracking jokes all the time. And Travis is just Travis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Travis. Yeah. Travis. yeah. It's upsetting because I wish that was our first shows and we're so much better. Now, yeah. Set, so it's like. We also, we didn't have a record out yet, so. The only things we had were like t-shirts and no one knew who we were so they were just like they were vibing on it people started getting into it and then later on we like went back to our merch thing which was like at the entrance of the 
the pavilions and stuff. And like literally, like, do you guys have a CD? Like, no. They're like, do you have stuff on YouTube? We're like, no. no. They're like, huh? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Are you guys even a band? Like, what is this? So, but besides that, it was cool. It was really cool. Speaking of blank, top three blank songs. Uh, family reunion. Oh. I miss you. <laughs> and uh, Where are you, you, you give one. You were playing one earlier. Which one's that? I was playing. Because I, I like that one. First date or feeling this? Feeling this. Oh, that's very feeling nice. Yeah. Time to break up. I love that song. Yeah. The drum fill uh, on that tune and pathetic. He plays it so fast on Mark Tom and Travis show. It's unreal. Oh yeah. It's wild. <laughs> but it's so crazy. Um, you guys have webisodes out now called uh, Make Out on the Couch. Clever. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Um, which dives like deeper into the band, um, and you also have uh, "Make Out with Us," another clever one, uh, which is like your online series. How did that idea come about? Yeah, so I mean, it was just like me, Tyler, and this guy Sean. We were just kind of like, because he's been helping us out to try to just like deal with a lot of like the the work and like trying to like come up with game plans of like more creative stuff. And we just were, you know, hanging out on his couch. And we're like, we could just play songs right here and like just do them. And we kind of just let it happen the way it did. Like, initially, we weren't sure what we were going to call it, but then it was like, oh, make up on the couch. Yeah, obviously, we're yeah. just doing this. And, and we also thought it would be cool. We thought it would just be cool to kind of, like, show people more of what the songs were and give our take on it. I like that. Because we haven't done that, really. Yeah, so. I was going to say, we get it asked that kind of stuff all the time. So just by putting that stuff out kind of makes it easy for everybody who's interested to go and find it and listen and kind of learn a little bit more about what we're... I remember even, out. like, prior to the internet, there used to be bands that would have albums out, and, like, the lyrics would be there, and then they would have, like, this song. Commentary, about this. Yeah. yeah. But now we have the interweb. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about Make Out on the Couch, you guys dive into your songs and what they're about. Um, what is your actual song process like? Lyrics in the song, what comes first, like, lyrics or music? Yeah, predominantly, um, we've kind of functioned on a lyric-first basis. A couple of them kind of, like, there'll be like instrumental ideas that will be there prior to the song being created, but usually it's like, you'll have to make it fit into the lyric, if that makes sense. For the most part, it's just like, um, everybody will kind of sit down, and because uh, the way we wrote The Good Life for the most part was we tackled it all in one month. So I mean, we brought demos to John Feldman, and there were a couple of them that he really vibed with, Open Minded and Salt Lake City. He really liked those two, and those were done for the most part before they even made it to his studio. The rest of them, we just wrote right there. there so like we all discuss yo like what's going on in the world what's going on in your lives and like what do you want to talk about and we just we're being real about it um some of the best songs uh on the record were just kind of like talking about just life and being there with each other and that was kind of a cool experience because usually it was just like i'd be a basement dweller writing my own shit but it was cool with uh, The Good Life, we just kind of opened up, and even Feldy was giving his take on the same topics that we're all discussing, and yeah. it was just a very open, creative process. And we had a lot of co-writes too, which wasn't really lyrically an asset, um, but a lot of like the, the color of the sounds and stuff you get are from those aspects. We even got Travis Barker on a couple of the tracks too. Yeah, I was going to ask, did like Travis, Little Aaron, and like the, the guys from 5 Seconds of Summer, did they contribute anything to writing, or would you just kind of throw them an idea and it was like, do this? Yeah, so um, so with 5 Sauce, they were very like musically oriented, so they were like melodies, and like, you know, this yeah. instrument part would be cool. With Little Aaron, he was very like, yo, let's go for this, and he was just kind of like, he was good at spitballing like quick phrases and stuff that were super relatable and stuff. Yeah. Um, not wordy, which I'm a very wordy person, so that was really cool to cross somebody that's the that polar opposite of me in that realm. Keep this idea, just cut all this off of there. Yep, yeah. yep, just cut the fat, and he was really cool at that, so yeah, that was that was a cool experience. So now you guys are on a uh, uh, tour with Cute is What We Aim, Cute is what we aim For. Yep. Uh, what has tour been like? Uh, you guys are like halfway point? Maybe yeah. a little further, right? Uh, not quite halfway. Okay, oh wow, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's only a short one. Yeah. Short one, I wish it was longer. Uh, it's been great so far. Um, we've been seeing a lot of people that we met at Warp Tour come back out and I'm singing here. along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, uh, But yeah, a lot of fans and stuff too. And what's really cool is that like every tour we have different merch and stuff. So I always know where the merch is coming from. That's awesome. And so like when people come in wearing certain shirts or whatever, and we're That's like, we know where we're going. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. came and saw us at this tour. And you know, we've been seeing a lot of Warp Tour. And, a lot of work for people, so it's well, been really cool. But we see a lot cool. from, uh, we did a tour with Icon for Hire 
way yeah, before the spring. Tour. Yeah. And uh, we see a lot of those shirts too. So that's like cool to kind of see those throwbacks. So. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of people making some new fans. It's been good. It's been really good. You guys try to keep that a theme, like making a shirt per tour? I like to have that as a thing if, if we can do it, you know. Um, it's just like it gives it a little more of like a, a time and space kind of effect where like they will remember that night because they saw it there and they didn't ever see it again and they bought it, you know what I mean? Now they have it and it's like you just have a piece of time and like the piece of like the history of everything and you were there and I think that's really cool. So like I said, you guys are like a little before or over halfway through tour, Thanksgiving is next week. Yes. Uh, what are your guys' Thanksgiving plans? We're doing a Friendsgiving at Ty's house. Yeah, Thanksgiving. so we're, uh, we're back, so we're from Massachusetts, so we're back in our hometown in like just a few days on Monday. Um, and so my mom wanted to have everybody over, so like Sam's parents and family are coming over, and Jake's parents and family are coming over, and awesome. we're just having it early, because when Thanksgiving actually hits, we're going to be up in Buffalo, so. Yeah. <laughs> have you experienced a U.S. Uh, Thanksgiving? Last year. Yeah, yeah. last, last year. year. Yeah. What was your, like, take on that? Like, just a bunch of people getting together and just cramming food? Food and alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. And, that was uh, fun, though. lots of signed Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to word this and try to sound fancy, so I'm just going to try to sound fancy and say it. It doesn't make any sense, I'll ask it again. Um, consumers of music can sometimes be like a person uh, who wants a big family. Um, uh, as soon as you have a kid, um, everyone wants to know when the next one is. <laughs> Which is kind of the same thing when you put out an album. So, yes. when are you guys putting out new music? Well, early next year. Yeah. Really? Yep. That's awesome. Early next year. So we shot two music videos right before we came out on this tour, and those are both for new songs on the new, uh, new release. New release, yeah that's, yeah. that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're stoked that we're actually going to play one of them tonight. So I was just going to ask you guys playing any tunes tonight. Yep. yep. Did you guys record the whole record yet? Is it still what? Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. Ready, it's done. finished. Yeah. Who'd you go in we, the studio with? That was with Felt Felt well. you went back? Yep. Yep. I asked over Warped when you guys were like looking at each other like, I don't know if we can say that. <laughs> yeah, well now it's like yeah, in it's the works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And lastly, what is next uh, starting in 2019? But I think you guys kind of already answered that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got um, new music coming your way. We got, uh, we're going to be trying to get on the road again. Um, so yeah, we're going out on the road. Uh, we're doing a little headliner, actually. Awesome. We're going out with Story Untold, Handguns, and Oh Weatherly. Um, Woo! I love Handguns. Yeah. yeah, I know it's a, it's like their comeback yeah. too. So we're stoked on that, um, and we're just hitting a few like major markets up in the Northeast here. We're doing like Chicago, Detroit, um, Philly, uh, New York, Boston, a couple others, Cleveland, I think. Okay. Uh, there's a few yeah. more in there, but it's a short little run, but it should be good. It's in uh, timed in with our new release. So. Awesome. Uh, new name for the record? You guys have one yet? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <I'm talking. Okay. laughs> but this has been the Pop on Dad with the guys from Makeout. Yeah, thank you, dude. Uh, yeah, thanks for having thanks us. Anytime. Hey, thanks a lot for like, commenting, and subscribing. Give this a share on over to people who like pop punk stuff and some Blink-182 stuff. I guess they're pop punk too. Thanks a whole lot to the guys from Makeout for taking the time and sitting down and talking to me. And you can check out their latest tunes, tour, and more down in the description below. Check out the Pop Punk Dad merch store where you can find cool stuff like this thing. And above all else, stay pop punk. Later!